So I'm taking a quick little break to go buy a little Christmas present for my mom. It won't really be a Christmas present, it'll be like a little surprise from here. They have the most wonderful locally made chocolates and fudge if that's your thing, it's not ours. Um, so I'm going to go in and hopefully they will have her favorite flavors in stock. I'm good, thank you. I'd like to get a box of these truffles, please. Okay, yeah. Um, you used to have a square box. I think it fit 12, but... Oh, yeah, so we have like the, the 4, 9, and 16. I want to choose them. Well, yeah. Let's do 16, please. Perfect, all right. Thank you. Whenever yeah. you're ready. All right. We'll do two of the orange marzipans. All right. Hi. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, four of the Grand Marnier dark chocolate. Those are my mother's favorites. Yes. And then um, we'll do two of the passion fruit, mm -hmm. two of the lemon. Um, what else? At work, someone is having like a little like holiday party, and they're like, "Oh, there's a white elephant." I'm like, "I don't know." We'll do two of the toasted um, coconut and two of the coconut cloud. Right. And what does that put us at? You are at two, six, yep, eight, it's like ten, twelve, fourteen. There's two more. Wonderful. Yeah. We'll do two of the dark Colombian. Perfect. Can you tell we like dark chocolate? Thank you. Perfect. And then, uh, do you want me to throw a ribbon on there for you? Oh, that would be wonderful. She loves pink. Results. He did such a beautiful job. Look at the cute doggy. So cute. Can't wait to see Lady and my mom. But before we get to that, I need some sustenance. So this is one of my favorite places. I'm gonna get a coffee and a pain au chocolat, I think, if they have some. Yes. That's where it's at. Oh, look, I was waiting for my coffee and I saw this cute little pooch. He brings in the customers, I guarantee. Look at that cute little bow. We finished at the office, did my sort of Saturday morning going into Saturday afternoon stuff, uploaded my video, which I think is now live, it was processing a little while ago, and I dropped off the whole back of my car was filled with donation bags again. I did another little clear out, got rid of some of the things on El Forn's closet that nobody was wanting, which is fine. I'm happy to donate it. There's just a few things left on there now that people have showed interest in, so I haven't deleted them yet. Um, but that's kind of been a nice role for me is to do these clear outs. Anything that's, you know, not really top notch fancy, I just donate right away. List some things, sell some things, donate the rest, and move on. And it just really keeps, you know, the townhouse a little bit more clutter free. So um, I also had some storage bins and everything, and it was literally like to the ceiling full. Um, but they're super friendly at Goodwill, nice guys. They work outside like all day long. Um, and so I'm super grateful to them for being there for making it so convenient um, I'm now at Chevron and I have a question for you I feel like there's not gonna be anybody out there who owns an Alfa Romeo because they're not you know super popular cars in um, North America maybe if you're in Europe it's a lot more popular there um, the Stelvio at least um, but whenever I go to fill up my car I seem like this total blonde now, blonde moment, um, who doesn't know how to fill up her own car. But the funny thing is, even though I am newer to that, it took me a while to realize that this car has a quirk. And I want to know if anyone out there has a similar quirk with their car, or is mine defective? I don't know. But it's such a little stupid thing as long as you know. When I go to open the door for the fuel tank, it will not open unless I do two things lock the car and then unlock the car. I don't understand why that is. I've never heard of that for a car before, um, but maybe it's normal. I am, you know, green enough at owning uh, my own kind of newer car that maybe it's like 
a normal thing that everyone has? I don't know. I'm just gonna put that question out there um, and then head home. I feel like making soup. It feels like a soup kind of day. It's nice and chilly out. I'm all cozy. I want like a warm minestrone. It's been a moment since I've made like a vlogging minestrone. It used to be a real thing for me. So I might do that. And then I'm gonna spend the whole evening making orders. So a little bit of a fail. I don't have any canned beans, which is what's super convenient to make minestrone. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna wing it a little bit. I have this mix and it does make really delicious soup, but it takes forever to cook. So I might have to have a little snack, um, but it does turn out really, really good. It's gonna need to cook for about two hours. I bet you can soak it and then that would save a lot on cooking time, but Whatever, I'll use that time productively and have a little snack. Add some mushrooms, some of these diced up really sweet, wonderful bell peppers, a leek, carrots, onion, the obvious stuff. And then I'm gonna finish it off with some of that dinosaur kale, lacinato kale, you know, the one that's not curly, um, that tastes better. <laughs> I'm gonna wilt that in at the end and it should make for a pretty hearty, tasty dinner. Gotta make Laura Vitale proud. In goes the Parmesan rind. And I'm just loving all of these colors. I think it'll be worth the wait. I put a whole thing of mushrooms in there. So many yummy things. You guys, this is gonna sound super dramatic, but if you were here and I could serve you a bowl of this, you would agree. It's so good. All of the flavors from the different vegetables, it's a little creamy from the beans and the grains cooking in there. Took almost two hours we're at like one hour and 45 minutes here's how i'm gonna finish it i'm gonna add just the smallest splash of apple cider vinegar and no it's not because this is gonna like make me live forever or whatever but i think a little bit of acidity at the end um of a soup just lifts everything a little bit you know kind of like um, a lot of Greek soups have lemon. This is kind of the same thing. I just don't think lemon would be right in this one. It's too kind of hearty for that. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then I washed my kale and I'm just gonna take some kitchen scissors like a savage and hack it up right into the soup and then serve. So as the kale cooked, I stood there over my masterpiece and I couldn't decide which way to take it because I was in an unusual state of ridiculous luxury where I had parsley, cilantro, and dill, and green onions, all kind of finishing herbs, right? to add on top so i just i didn't know what to do and so i decided to just go crazy and pull an allison roman and i did dill and sour cream so here's the finished soup i cannot wait to eat this and i opened a bottle of wine with the excuse that my boyfriend and his friend are coming over tomorrow so i can drink more of it with them and it's from a local winery and it's so good washington has really wonderful wines in general, um, but for red specifically, a winery that does a lot of different really great reds. I haven't had one single disappointing red from them. Can you tell that I'm starving? I've become a little bit more of an early dinner kind of person over the last year and a half. Um, and it's a tough habit to break if you want your dinner at like, you know, 6, 6.30 to have to wait until 7.30ish. It's really painful. Also, this is after dinner, post two bowls of soup. Can we talk about how I made it to 33 without ever eating these? They're so good. Don't make my mistakes. So good. I woke up and not a kitty was stirring, but look what happened overnight. <laughs> it's like Santa came, but actually all of these are outgoing, so. This is what I did last night. Party on a Saturday night. I wrapped all these up and guess what? There are more upstairs. Good morning everyone, happy Sunday. No interest? Look. Hmm? Here, should I toss it? Sammy is appreciative. 
And then we have one more because we skipped yesterday. One for each of you. Oh, look, it's another little ornament type one. This one is so cute. It's a snow globe, kind of like mine. Cute, right? Does this one smell any better? Or is it Sammy's too? I'm gonna leave it right here and you two can decide ownership. Oh, there we go. I think it's been decided. So once a week, if I can, what I like to do is do some laundry, of course, but I feel like everyone does that on a Sunday. But you know, I tried to Marie Kondo my sweaters in my room clear out video and it does end up back like this because I guess I'm naturally a little bit messy and I'm always in a hurry. So this is how it kind of gets after a few weeks of not taking care of it. So I'm gonna fix it all and make it all pretty again because you know what I wear every day, except for today, I'm wearing a plaid shirt today, but every other day I wear my cashmere sweaters. So it makes a big difference to have them all laid out so I can really see what I have. That's better, not perfect but it's better. Hello tea advent calendar. It's been a moment since the day actually aligns with something I feel like drinking. So let's do this. All right, let's give this a try. Yes, finally a tea that I like. Oh, that really hits the spot. I feel like a little bit dehydrated. Hmm. I really like this one actually. The ginseng adds like a little nice kick to it. Mm. It's a really good tea advent calendar. It's excellent value. It's just like with every other tea calendar, not everything can be my cup of tea. The fruits of my handsome fisherman's efforts. We have some rice going in the rice cooker. I'm gonna make some garlic green beans. And here is some beautiful local red crab. It's crab season right now. And I made this double foil packet. I hope it holds up. Usually I use ones that are wider, um, but this is all I had. And then I just did all of the good aromatics. So I did some green onion, some ginger, some sesame oil, and then I'm gonna finish it with more fresh chopped green onion when it comes out of the oven. And a little bit of hot oil, and that will be a delicious dinner green beans in the air fryer. If you want them to be more uniformly crispy and brown, just do less of them than I did in the small basket. I overloaded it, but it'll still be delicious. I kind of, I don't hate the variation in texture. And then linked below in this video, I just thought what a great stocking stuffer these would be. These are cat chopstick holders and I seriously love mine. They add such a fun little touch to whenever, even you get, you know, takeout sushi or something, it just makes it feel special and adorable. Ta-da, look at that. And there's delicious sauce underneath. Good morning, everyone. I just got home from my morning meetings. I can actually take this off. Um, it's chilly outside today, but I dressed warmly and I really like my outfit, so I thought I would share it with you. These were purchased in the Nordstrom shoe sale, but like seriously years ago. I wanna say it's like over five years ago. They're Gian Vito Rossi, and they don't look brand new, but they look pretty new for how much I've worn them. And I just love them. And they're not super formal because my only meetings were virtual today today so the bottom half doesn't matter too much but I think it all looks really nice I really like how it turned out so these are my favorite Spanx skinny jeans if there's anyone else out there still wearing skinny jeans these ones are my favorite they're super comfortable and they do have all of the detailing of real jeans like pocket seams and everything like that and they have real pockets at the back actually so they're not too legging like um, and I get a small because I don't want them to be too tight. You know, I don't actually want them to be like control pants. But I really love the way they feel. And then I'm wearing a naked cashmere sweater. I really like this sweater because it's very thin. I actually have it in multiple colors. You may see the oatmeal at some point. I don't think I've worn it yet during Vlogmas. Um, but this is the olive color. And the reason I like these so much is that they're super thin and it's really hard to find high quality, super thin um, sweaters. And I usually prefer to wear 
um, sleeveless sweaters when I wear a blazer I prefer to have like the least amount of bulk possible so I like it if they cut off here um, or you know something like a silk shirt so this is you know unusual for me because it's got a full sleeve it's a you know full sweater that I would wear without a jacket but it's thin enough that it works with this blazer especially since this blazer is long and it's Philip Lim natural light for the win every time so I'm wearing my multicolor twist pearls but the main reason I wanted the bright lighting was to show you that the blazer has a little tiny stripe that's olive and most of it is more of you know teal evergreen color so it normally wouldn't work with the olive at all but it works in real life at least even if you can't tell because there's a thin little line that's the same color as the sweater and that is my favorite strategy for all you plaid lovers out there for wearing plaid is to pick up the thinnest line in the pattern of the plaid and match that I don't know why I just think it looks so nice and so polished and it makes everything look super streamlined and just right so that's my outfit of the day today I feel super comfortable and now that my meetings are over I get to even get more comfy and take off the blazer and the shoes and just get some work done at my desk after I passed my bar exams I bought myself a pizza oven because it's always been a dream of mine to own one of the really fancy ones that you have the fire inside with the bricks and the logs and the works I don't have room for that in my townhouse so instead I got an uni not sponsored at all I just wanted to see what it was like I'd seen a lot of people on social media talking about it and so I have one and it's been a bit of a trial and error kind of journey figuring out the dough recipe um, how much to preheat the oven how much flour to put on the bottom of the pizza and if you get one of those variables wrong you do kind of end up with a result that's only semi edible so We've kind of played with it and now we're finally at a place where the dough is looking good. We have some exciting toppings tonight and I'm feeling really positive about the results. So let's see how it turns out. But before that, let me show you the spread for the decorating of the pizza. So of course it results in a disastrous kitchen because you have flour everywhere and because it cooks so quickly at such a hot temperature, you really do want to pre-cook anything that isn't going to be good if it's not you know completely cooked so things like peppers I don't like them super crunchy so I cook this with a little bit of garlic and then today the new thing I want to do is make a potato pizza when I was a kid in Italy I tried this wonderful it was a thicker pizza but it had thin sliced potatoes with a creamy sauce on the bottom and rosemary and it was life-changing I was obsessed and it would sell out every day so it was a whole race to get to the buy the slice pizza place this is like a family vacation like 20 years ago but I still remember the pizza so I'm going to try and recreate it here is the kind of pre-stretched out pizza but I still need to play with it a little bit and we're going to decorate them up and then stick them in the uni and I will show you what that process looks like pizza number one is ready to go voila Oh, it smells so good already. You can really smell the char, but you do need to spin it, which I feel like is something that isn't super advertised, so you can't just leave it, otherwise it'll cook unevenly. As you can see, the fire is only at the back, so you'll end up with a pizza that's partly raw, partly burnt. So you need to keep an eye on it and spin it every few minutes, and then overall it definitely cooks very quickly compared to an oven pizza. And then I wanted to show you these plates. I think they're so gorgeous. They're just from some random online boutique, but in Italy. And my mom ordered them for me. It was a gift from her to celebrate. And this Four Seasons one is my absolute favorite because you can see it depicts all the Four Seasons, but everything is super comic book-y. It's so fun. There's the margarita because of course that means uh, Daisy in Italian and in French, Marguerite. And marinara, I guess, is a pizza that's named after sailors. So they all have really fun illustrations and they're big enough for even a larger pizza that this oven is meant to accommodate because for the regular uni as opposed to the more expensive um, sized up one, you don't want to make the pizza too big. Otherwise, that's when you start to run into disaster territory. So these are perfect for that. Voila! It looks so good, I can't wait to eat it. Look at that char and the nice 
puff there's lots of air in the crust which means this one um, got lots of air into the dough which is super important and was a bit of a fail last time I made it all right so this is the adventure pizza of the night I put my own twist on it compared to what I ate as a kid but it's creme fraiche as a base thinly sliced potatoes that I air fried pretty briefly so they're like you know not all the way there but pretty close rosemary and then borsa cheese on the top literally still crackling it's so hot and it looks so good I might have overloaded it a little bit with toppings, but I really didn't want it to be dry like white pizzas sometimes can be. And I can smell the rosemary. It looks so good. I can't wait. Hello everyone. My OGs will remember this sweater perhaps. It's from Coach. It was ridiculously expensive, but I just had to have it because you guys may know I'm a dinosaur obsessy. Um, but I thought it would be fun to wear something that's sort of like a little bit ugly sweaterish today. I just washed my hair this morning and it's the softest that it's felt since I dyed it. And it's all thanks to you. Thank you so much for the recommendation for the Olaplex Rinse Out Pre-Conditioner. They have kind of complicated products, but the way I did it, um, which was really easy, um, while I made my coffee, I just dampened my hair, put a whole bunch in, let it said for like 10 15 minutes and then i washed my hair as normally so i'll link it down below i ordered it as soon as someone recommended it because they said it made a huge difference I especially noticed it after um i washed my hair and it was drying it was just a lot easier to comb through and less tangly um, and i think it looks a little bit more shiny than it has as well so i'm so pleased with that thank you so much for all of your tips i feel like we're on this little hair journey together talking about journeys here's an update on a two-year one um, i just found out that my washington bar card is in the mail so i'm really looking forward to receiving that and to celebrate that being issued and kind of the ultimate close of that whole journey i'm gonna buy myself a big treat which is part a birthday present to myself too. You guys know I do have a tendency to do that every year. And it also is a nice treat for me because Vlogmas is so much hard work that you don't see because you don't see all of the editing and so forth that goes into it. So I'm going to order this and ship it to Hawaii and then it'll be a nice treat to look forward to. And I'll do an unboxing for those of you who enjoy luxury handbag unboxings. You might like this. So here it is. Here's a sneak peek. And in this video, I will link the site that I'm buying it from because they're actually doing 10% off, which obviously for a price point like this makes a really big difference. Sammy's waiting for her advent toy but I'm saving some of them so that when I'm away they will have something to look forward to. I've never purchased from this handbag brand before or I should say leather goods brand but I know it's good because um, when my mom was working that's where she bought her briefcase from and she still has it and it looks scarily brand new like the leather is such high quality so i'm really i think changing my taste a little bit towards more craftsmanship focused brands it's more of a tweak than like a big change um but it also goes with the chanel price increase which i think is ridiculous i think it's too much um they've gone overboard to being more or less on par with Hermes now. And I don't have a particular thirst for an Hermes bag, especially here in Seattle. I don't know how much I would really use one for now at least. I'll probably get one someday. Um, but I thought this tote looked really beautiful. I've never seen it in real life, so it's a bit of a gamble. But what I'm hoping for it is that it will be you know casual but you can really see the beauty of the leather and the craftsmanship and it'll be really well made and roomy kind of like an alternative to a neverfull that kind of vibe is what i'm going for but something a little bit different so we'll see how it turns out i'll unbox it and review it with you later on in vlogmas the next installment of vlogmas will include my journey over to hawaii so we're almost there in terms of getting some sunshine and a little bit more of a slow pace so thank you for your patience with just these kind of vlogs around my house that's just kind of what i'm doing i'm just working all the time so i really appreciate you kind of being here to keep me company and keep this vlogmas tradition going and i will see you in the the next festive installment. Bye!